Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. What are the four critical periods and how do they affect my dog's physical and mental growth? Welcome to part three of our critical periods of a puppy's life. If you did not listen to part one and two, pause your player and go back and listen. We'll be right here for you when you get back. I have been involved with the physical health and well-being of dogs since I was 15 years old. At that time, there weren't many VHS videos about dog training, and there certainly was not a search engine called Google or a YouTube channel that can literally teach you anything you want to know in minutes. I learned by trial and error, by talking to others and eventually gaining a mentor or two over the years all the while reading books about learning theory and doing my best to stay up to date. In the late 1990s, I stumbled upon a book called The New Knowledge of Dog Behavior by Clarence Pfaffenberger. This book set in motion not only a viable career in dog training, but shaped my approach to it and my understanding of it so that I could help people make better choices when choosing their own dogs and has assisted in the development of my own breeding programs with German Shepherds and Siberian Huskies and eventually Alaskan Huskies. If you are a canine enthusiast, dog trainer, dog breeder, or just someone interested in how dogs learn, then this is the program for you. If you know someone that may benefit from this information, please share this podcast, DogWorks Radio, with them. So far, we have learned about the first few weeks of a puppy's life. We learned about when they are first able to hear, see, and walk on their own. We also learned about the importance of imprinting early socialization, and the fear period. Now, let's get started with part three of four. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska, this is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is your host, Michelle Forto, and I am the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works. Are you one of the few people that train your dog? As a professional dog trainer, I find it interesting that every inquiry I receive is always about unwanted dog behaviors that I immediately recognize as starting during the four critical periods of life for a dog. On part one, we talked about the first three weeks of a puppy's life, and this week we are going to dive deeper and cover weeks seven through 12. If only the breeder, whether a professional or an amateur, had just taken the time to learn about canine development and behavior and had then incorporated it into their breeding program, even if it was just a one-time breeding or accidental, then the dogs they are producing would actually gain a better start in life that would stick with them far into adulthood, thus producing a well-rounded, adjusted pup that owners would be highly unlikely to be wary of and ready to give up on. I often do breed referrals for people looking for the right dog for their family, and I am the one who chooses your dog for our lead dog service dog program. Over the past two decades, I have trained several hundred dogs. In fact, I average about 250 new dogs every year. That's a lot of dogs. I have bred my own litters and trained each and every one of them up to the age of 12 weeks. 
but I have also trained many of them into adulthood. I have trained many other puppies and rescues, and I have seen many mistakes made by breeders, pet stores, shelters, fosters, and even the new owners themselves. Puppies have four critical periods of life. This is part three. I hope you tune in next week for part four. Again, I have used this information I am sharing for years in raising puppies and preparing them for life. It is my hope that the novice and the expert in raising and training of dogs appreciates the information being shared and utilizes this information to raise well-balanced, better-trained puppies. Reminder, the purpose of a puppy program is to condition the puppy to learn and that learning and doing things are fun. The program aims at preventing problems rather than correcting problems later. This purpose of puppy program must be fully understood. Therefore, I recommend that you do not attempt to program any puppy until you are familiar with Clarence Pfaffenberger's The New Knowledge of Dog Behavior. Here we go. The critical period days 50 through 84 is the third critical period. Days 50 through 56. The puppy has the learning ability of an adult dog from seven weeks onwards. Start house training, crate training, and manners. Begin teaching the pup boundaries. Start conditioning the puppy to grooming and to wearing a collar and a leash. Start puppy obedience using a flat collar. Five-minute sessions. All week, do the following. Handle and restrain the puppy. Cradle. Touch. Pull the ears. Fingers in the mouth. Pinch the toes gently. Obedience. Needs to be habitual training. Follow on your left side. Off leash and sit. Man and dog socialization. Dog and dog socialization. Location conditioning in different places. Isolation conditioning by starting in the crate. Play, retrieve, and bag work or appropriate work for what the dog will be utilized for. For example, begin working on picking up objects, take it and give for service dogs. Practice gating and show posing every day. You stand during grooming. Practice obstacle work, exposure to medical equipment, wheelchairs, strollers, bicycles, skateboards, etc. Include working with the puppy at night, especially service dogs, search and rescue dogs, and sled dogs. Note, begin collecting your set of 12 articles. Those required in the reversed incentive system of tracking training. A set of 12 objects all known to the dog is accumulated and includes one special or favorite article, usually one of the puppy's toys. It also includes four black leather gloves and 18 utility scent discrimination articles. Six leather, six metal, and six wood. I'm going to go a little further here and let you guys know that that that's not just for teaching retrieving or uh, scent dogs. It's also for training of search and rescue dogs as well as service dogs. We want them to become familiar with these articles so that they don't have a problem with them later in life. Here we go. We are on day 56. The puppy is now eight weeks old. And this is the typical age that you as the new owner would be receiving your puppy. So now is where things can get a little bit mixed up. So listen close. If you've just gotten a puppy, here's where your responsibility can get started. You're going to test for sound startle. You're going to take the puppy swimming, even if it's in that bathtub, five to 10 minutes in the water. Days 57 through 63. This is a fear period when traumatic experiences have a profound effect. Keep the puppy in stable circumstances and keep the puppy safe from trauma. Continue your house training. Do handling and grooming, touch therapy and cradling. Do puppy obedience using the flat collar. Do attention training for sit, 
stand and down. Man dog and dog dog socialization continues. Location conditioning and longer isolation conditioning. Remember, isolation conditioning is using the crate. Retrieving now includes a wide variety of objects, including all the puppy toys in the set of retrieved objects. This is also where if you're not doing a retrieving dog, but you're doing a service dog or even a sled dog, where you start using those variety of objects in your training. Bag work. Introduce a piece of Hessen burlap for protection dogs. Introduce light harness no pulling for sled dogs and assistance dogs introduce booties for five minutes show stance and gating practice include night work practice obstacle course take the puppy into traffic take the puppy into crowds day 63 or nine weeks You're going to test for sound startle again, and you're going to take the puppy swimming. Day 64 through 70, puppy obedience training is increased to 15 minutes. Still use a flat collar. Introduce the finish. Introduce the go out. Introduce line out for sled dogs. Introduce get dressed for all assistance dogs. Take the puppy for walks in the neighborhood. Continue location conditioning and continue with longer periods of isolation or crate training. Practice retrieves, bag exercises, harness, booties, test for sound startle. Practice your show stance and gating as well as grooming. Practice obstacle course. Do some dominance exercises and handle the puppy a lot. Don't forget to include night work and work with traffic and crowds. We're going to take a short break here and learn all about First Paw Coffee. So earlier you learned about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Tail Wagger Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Tail Wagger Blend is their first offering, and its name and label were crowdsourced from their Facebook fans. How cool is that? The Tail Wagger Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. It is a medium roast from Colombian beans with tastes of Brazil nuts, grapefruit, and oak. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. All right, we are back. Before we went to the break, we learned about what happens in a puppy's life in the days 50 to 70 and let you in on our puppy program that you can use to get your puppy to be one of the best dogs it can be when it grows up. That's what it's all about, right? Now, we're going to learn what we need to do on weeks 10 through 12. If you are a new puppy owner, it is most likely you will have your new companion in your home by this time, and it is important that you continue to set a good foundation moving forward to ensure that you set your new pup up for success. Day 70 means that the puppy is now 10 weeks old. You're going to test for sound startle, and you're going to swim the puppy in water that moves or a light surf day 71 through 77 take the puppy into crowds and traffic work at night often continue with band dog and dog dog socialization puppy obedience training retrieving bag work harness booties location training do elevators many different places, isolation training, longer periods, and posing and gating, obstacle course, handling and grooming, and walks in the neighborhood. Woo! Sounds like a lot, but that puppy is absorbing every single thing that you're exposing it to. On to day 77. We are now 11 weeks old. We're going to test for sound startle, and we're going to go swimming. Day 78 through 84, the puppy receives the first polyvalent vaccination this week. Continue exactly as in the previous week. This week, you must decide whether or not your puppy is to undergo bite inhibition 
conditioning. This is normally done between week 12 and week 16 as follows. The puppy must have free periods to engage in play fighting with one or more puppies of the same approximate age. When they attack each other, they learn to inhibit or soften their bites. Do not omit this unless you are skilled in handling and living with a Schutzhund police or protection dog. Puppies which do not undergo bite inhibition, grow up to be very hard biters. This is very useful for dogs that are intended for the Schutzen sport or for service as a police or protection dog. These dogs will have to be played with using an object such as a burlap sack or other pulling and biting object because they are too rough for play using one's hands or unprotected arms for the dogs to grasp in play. Now is when you must decide on this part of your puppy's program. Day 84 or the 12th week, you're going to test for sound startle and you're going to take the puppy swimming. Up to this point, you have been very busy with your puppy. Think of this week as a testing period. Go back and do some of the exercises that you have worked on to this point. This will give you a good idea of your pup's progress and if things still need to be worked on. This is also when most people will start calling a professional dog trainer to enroll into a basic obedience program. We encourage all dog owners to at least enroll your dog into a class like this. If for nothing else, it will allow a professional to evaluate your progress up to this point and let you know a few tips or tricks to keep you on the right track. Note, once again, prepare early. It's easy to set up your phone or a GoPro and do a video journal. You'll also want a calendar with ample space to take notes. This goes for you, the new dog owner as well, not just for the breeder. The day you got your puppy... You should set up a journal too. It helps you learn what the puppy struggles with and what the puppy excels with. When we come back from the break, we're going to go behind the breed and learn all about the miniature schnauzer. We're living in uncertain times. If there is one thing we can be thankful for, that is the recent pet adoption boom. Shelters are being cleared out, and that means you may not know much about your new best friend. Alaska Dog Works virtual and on-site classes are the best way for you to build a lasting bond and learn about your pup, new or old. From setting up a proper routine to learning the commands and much more, Alaska Dog Works provides you with the resources to develop your dog into one of the best. Right now, Alaska Dog Works has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Go to alaskadogworks.com now and use promo code DOGWORKS and save 20% off your training program at the time of your booking. Visit alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS to save 20% today. That's alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS at the time of booking. Okay, guys, let's learn all about how to train a miniature schnauzer, shall we? Even though these are one of the most popular breeds in the United States, we don't get the chance to train very many of them. One thing is for certain, since these behind the breed segments are so popular, I am certain someone will give us a call in a week or two asking to train theirs. All about the miniature schnauzer. These stocky, robust little dogs standing 12 to 14 inches tall, miniature schnauzers were bred down from their larger cousins, standard schnauzers. The bushy beard and eyebrows give minis a charming, human-like expression. The hard, wiry coat comes in three color patterns, salt and pepper, black and silver, and solid black. Created to be all-around farm dogs and ratters, they are tough, muscular, and fearless without being aggressive. The miniature schnauzer is a bright, friendly, trainable companion, small enough to adapt to apartment life, but tireless enough to patrol acres of farmland. They get along well with other animals and kids. Minis are sturdy little guys and enjoy vigorous play. 
home and family oriented, they will make great watchdogs. Their temperament is friendly, smart, and obedient. In the AKC breed popularity, they are ranked 19th out of 195 breeds. Their height is between 12 and 14 inches. They weigh between 11 and 20 pounds. They have a life expectancy of 12 to 15 years. They are grouped in the Terrier group. The history of the miniature Schnauzer. The breed today known as the Standard Schnauzer, one of Europe's supreme all-around farm dogs, has a lineage going back to at least the 15th century. Wow. Old-time German farmers bred the standard down to miniature size, the better to work as fearless barnyard ratters. With his rat dog background, the miniature schnauzer resides in the AKC Terrier group with other diminutive rat catcher breeds. But the mini is unique among AKC Terriers in that he has no British blood in his veins. The vast majority of the terrier breeds were developed in the British Isles. The few created outside of Britain, the Rat Terrier or the Chesky Terrier, for instance, were created with crosses to existing British breeds. Alone among terriers, the miniature Schnauzer is wholly a product of continental stock, standard Schnauzer, Affin Pincher, and Poodle. This explains that though the Mini was born to the traditional work of small terriers, his personality is quite different. Not for him is the dure independence of the Scottish Terrier or the fiery temperament of the Irish Terrier. Rather, he is an overtly friendly dog, spirited but obedient and willing to please. For the most part, the miniature schnauzer's ratting days are long behind him. Today, he is the best known as a charming and attractive companion and a steady winner at dog shows here and abroad. Of the three schnauzer breeds, the miniature ranks consistently highest in the AKC registrations. Care and training. The miniature schnauzer should do well on a high-quality dog food, whether commercially manufactured or home-prepared with your veterinarian supervision and approval. Any diet should be appropriate to the dog's age, puppy, adult, or senior. Some dogs are prone to getting overweight, so watch your dog's calorie consumption and weight level. Treats can be an important aid in training, but giving too many can cause obesity. Learn about which human foods are safe for dogs and which are not. Check with your vet if you have any concerns about your dog's weight or diet. Clean, fresh water should be available at all times. The miniature schnauzer has a double coat, a wiry top coat with a soft undercoat that requires frequent brushing, combing, and grooming to look its best. The breed sheds very little. For the show ring, some of the dog's coat is regularly stripped by hand. Most owners of pet miniature schnauzers choose to have the coat trimmed with clippers by a professional groomer. This should be done every five to eight weeks for the dog to look his best. The miniature schnauzer should get a bath once a month or so depending on his surroundings. Nails should be trimmed monthly and ears checked weekly for debris or excess wax and cleaned as needed. Alert and lively, miniature schnauzers require regular daily exercise to maintain their mental and physical health. They have a medium energy level and can easily adapt to city or country living. The breed benefits from having a fenced yard where they can run and chase a ball safely and enjoy playtime with their owner. Their greatest joy is to be with their family and doing activities together. Miniature schnauzers have a strong prey drive, so they should never be allowed off leash when not in a fenced area as they might not resist the urge to chase after small animals. Miniature schnauzers are friendly, lively, and eager to please, and they learn quickly. The breed's high intelligence makes it necessary to keep training fun and interesting as they can get bored with repetition. They should be socialized from an early age and both dog and owner benefit from puppy training classes as well. 
The miniature schnauzer makes an excellent companion and can do very well in a number of canine sports, including agility, obedience, rally, and earth dog events. Want to learn how to train your miniature schnauzer to be one of the best trained dogs? Visit our website, alaskadogworks.com, to learn more. As always, follow us on our social channels. Just search DogWorks Radio. See you next time. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.